TradingView Lightweight Charts is a TypeScript library that allows you to create charts with the look and feel and aesthetics and performance that you're used to on the tradingview.com platform, but to embed that within your own custom applications, such as the one you see on screen, which is streaming price data from Binance in real time for Bitcoin and updating that on the chart. As you can see, the price over here and the price on Binance over there will be roughly in sync, give or take a little bit of delay. Lightweight Charts is free and open source and published by the TradingView developers themselves. As we can see here, it's under the Apache 2.0 license. So you're free to use it in any of your own projects as long as you provide attribution. There are some limitations to it. So if you use the normal TradingView platform, you'll be used to drawing all sorts of different astrology patterns on your charts. And by default, the TradingView lightweight implementation doesn't have the ability to draw anything on it, nor can it add any inbuilt indicators so in trading view, I can come in here, I can add some random indicator from the massive, massive library that they have here or the community scripts, anything like that. You don't have that within trading view lightweight. There is the trading view advanced charts, which you can send in an application to trading view and they may or may not accept you. This version does have some drawing capabilities so that you can draw things on the charts, or if you prefer to stick with an open source license, you can develop your own plugins for TradingView Lightweight. There's documentation on it here and they have a whole plugin system for that kind of thing, but obviously that's going to take some TypeScript and general web development knowledge and a lot of time and effort. But I found lightweight charts to be really great for displaying any kind of financial data. We can't draw on them by default, but we can plot any indicators that we want. It's just a matter of having to do the calculations in whatever language you're in and actually write up the logic for the indicators rather than having them pre-built and available. Now there are some adapters between the TypeScript library and Python, such as this one, Lightweight Charts Python. Others are available. However, I generally recommend using the TypeScript library if it's at all possible for you, as all of these other libraries are maintained by volunteers and may or may not be up to date. And you might spend as much time hunting down bugs in these implementations or trying to add extra features as you would just building your own minimal bridge, say a widget for Jupyter Notebooks or your own web back and front end. It might be just as easy to do it yourself and you'll learn a lot more and be able to be more expressive with the way that you produce the charts. So if we dig into this little web application that I made here, you'll see that the whole thing is about 130 lines of TypeScript. The rest of this is just boilerplate TypeScript, JavaScript logic that we have to put in there to make it work. We have a very simple HTML layout. All of this is just styling and boilerplate. And the only real relevant information here is this div where we're going to put our chart. Returning to TypeScript here, the first thing we have to do is actually create the chart using this create chart function. It takes two main arguments. The first is the container in which you plan to place the chart. So we're just grabbing this div by ID that I just showed you. And then secondly, we have a bunch of different configuration options for the chart, such as what colors do you want things to be? How big do you want it to be? What color do you want the background? Lots of look and feel type things. Now the library itself is extremely well annotated and documented within the code itself. So if I grab this create chart function 
and go to the definition. So we're inside the actual lightweight charts code here. We can look at the parameters that it takes. So it takes the container, which we already talked about. And then if we want to figure out what different options we can provide because there are hundreds of them and it gets really confusing we can simply go to the definition of this chart options and then follow it down the rabbit hole a little bit and if you explore you'll find a whole bunch of options like this that you can provide like the width like the height auto size which we're using time scale which will tell you all of these options etc etc so they're all really well and rigorously defined within the code itself. It's something I like about TypeScript and the typings in it. And of course, this kind of formatting is very easy for an LLM to read if you don't want to manually dig into the code yourself. But that's how you can find all of the different configuration options. Otherwise, it can seem magical. You know, how am I pulling out these different configuration options? How do I know which ones are available? That's how I know. You just go here, go to definition and point your favorite LLM at it. So that's how we create this chart object here. The next step is to add a series to it. So a series is just some kind of line, essentially. So we have a candlestick series here. That's the price series. But we could change that if we wanted to. We could change that to a bar series or a line series if we wanted to or an area series here. A line series, various other kinds of series we can turn this into. And of course, an indicator like this one here is a line series. So you just define the series that you want to add. In our case, it's just a simple candlestick chart and we define the up and the down colors. Again, you can do the same thing in terms of if you're wanting to find the arguments and the specific configuration options, you can do the, the go to definition trick. I find that looking at the actual code helps me a lot more as other tutorials on the web might be out of date or indeed other documentation that you find online. We then, of course, have our actual data gathering. Now I'm using Binance, so we have a REST API for the historical data. So when I load up the chart for the first time, I just want the first 100 candles, so we have something to show. And then we also have a real-time streaming implementation here by just connecting to a WebSocket. And then whenever we get a message from this WebSocket, we call this update function. Now this update function, so we grab the candlestick series from earlier, and then this update function is really special and nice because all we're passing to it is the candlestick data that we get from the Binance WebSocket. So the WebSocket will tell us what the current candlestick looks like right now, what the most recent candlestick looks like for that particular price series. And we just call the update function here. And the beauty about it is it will automatically figure out whether it needs to update the most recent candle here or whether it needs to draw a new candle. And if it does just need to update the most recent candle or indeed draw another candle, it's going to be efficient about how it does it. It doesn't need to re-render the whole chart. I know I've tried to do similar things like this before in Plotly or other plotting libraries, and it's just so much cleaner and seamless to have this update API where you're simply updating the most recent candle and it's just going to redraw that section efficiently rather than having to redo the whole thing, which can be very, very laggy when you have the larger charts. Now, of course, I'm using Binance for ease of use here and so people can try this at home, but if you had your own Python indicators or your own Python data handlers where you're pulling information from you know a whole bunch of different data providers you're combining them together you're creating your own indicators and you're wanting to plot them this part is where you'd configure all this to be using your own locally hosted WebSocket and api implementation so that the typescript front end can pull from that and plot it if you set everything up right it'll be quite a similar setup to what we've got here just a few lines of code streaming your indicators and price data from your backend web app. And then at that point, all there really is to do is just glue this all together down at the bottom. 
So when we start the application, we run this main function. It pulls a whole bunch of historical data, as we discussed. It uses set data, and that will overwrite any existing data on that candlestick series. So just so we have something initially, you would use this set data if you were just displaying historical data, you weren't updating it, you would just use set data with the candle price data that you have or any indicator data, you would apply that to each individual series. And then after that, we simply connect to our WebSocket. And of course, the WebSocket handler that we discussed before calls candleseries.update every time it receives a message from Binance and updates this in the front end. So the whole of the API for our purposes of simply displaying indicators is really just a few things. You create your chart, you define a whole bunch of gubbins about the colors and whether you display certain elements or not. You add the series that you want to show. So your candlesticks, maybe you add an RSI, maybe you add a super trend, any, any indicators that you want to add, any lines that you want to add to the chart. You grab your data, however you're going to do that. And then depending on if you want historical data, you can use set data to create the chart. And that might be all you need. You might just literally need to display some historical data. You can zoom around on it, whatever you need. And then if you need real time data, just use the update logic with each new data point you're getting from your data source. And TradingView takes care of all the rendering, whether it's part of the current data point or the next data point, et cetera, et cetera. That's all handled in the Lightweight Charts library for you. So I encourage you to check out this little application that I built, maybe add something to it, adapt it for your own purposes. As always, all of the code will be available in the description and I'll see you in the next video.